Welcome back to the channel guys. I have something a little bit different and interesting for you today. So we're going to take a look back in time at a little song called Twin Delights that our friend David Kaner wrote for us. And I thought it would be fun since we have this YouTube channel. We have all of this kind of data and archives of us playing music from a year ago, two, three, and it goes back several years. And I thought it'd be fun to pick out one tune and then find some footage of it and put those videos together so we could kind of see what that tune sounded like and how it evolved over time. So I've got three clips um, in this video and then when I play this tune today, that'll be the fourth clip. But the first three, so the first number one clip that you're gonna see was us playing this tune, Twin Delights, um, probably five or six years ago. Um, we're in Corey's room and we're playing and we just look so, like, I look so nervous <laughs> and like tense and like worried about it. Um, this was a tune I kind of struggled with when I first learned it. It's kind of tricky. But uh, David Kaner, he had a, a really unique style of writing tunes and all his tunes sounded different, but they all had the little special David touch. And, and I will say a lot of his tunes are a little tricky to play. Um, but it's what makes them his and it's of course what makes them fun and challenging. So I also think it's interesting to look back over these videos and say of course our musical evolution Hopefully they're gonna like we can see a trend upward like we're getting better at playing this music but also I think it's interesting to Think about where was I during that time? Where was I during that space? Who was I? What was going on in my life? It's just a total snapshot and it helps us look back and remember things about ourselves and about our music that we might otherwise have just forgot or overlooked. So the first clip, me and Corey playing in her room. And then the second clip, I wanted to be careful about getting them in chronological order. The second clip that you're gonna see is actually us playing the tune with David before he found out he was sick, before he got his diagnosis of ALS. That was probably 2017 maybe something like that he actually played a concert set and he invited me and Corey to come play with him so like the last two or three songs we come up on stage and played with him and this is one of the, the songs that we played so that's going to be the second clip that you see is actually us playing this song with him and what's interesting is in the first clip when we're, it's just me and Corey in her room I'm playing uh, the only fiddle I had at that time, and I think it was made in 2007. So it's a student fiddle. It's not old. I'm older than it, but it still sounds good, and it and it's a was a fun fiddle to play. I still have it. I play it some. So that's the fiddle I played in the very first video. In the second video, where we're playing with David on stage in the concert set, I'm also playing that fiddle, and he is playing this fiddle. This was um, his fiddle for all the time that I knew him for the last however many years, whenever I met him. He found this fiddle and um, bought it off of someone for like 200 bucks and fixed it up. It was in bad condition, but he was very tickled that he was able to find it and fix it and make it playable again. So, and when he passed away, before he passed away, he decided to uh, leave his instruments to Corey and I in his will. So I have this fiddle. I have some other stuff. Corey has a guitar that was his. So it's just interesting. The first video and the second video, I'm playing the same fiddle. He's playing this one. And then in the third clip that you're going to see, I'm still playing the same fiddle. And we're back in Corey's room playing the song again at a different time and, and uh, at a later time. And I will say what's interesting about that is I have no idea why, but we got that song so fast. It was just like really quick, like rocking it along very fast. So the speed at which we're playing the song in the first two clips compared to the third one, it's like, whoa, I don't, what happened? In fact, I was listening to these clips last night because I told mom I was going to make this video and put it together. And she's like, are you listening to that one on fast speed? The third clip. And I said, no, that's just, I don't know why we were playing that fast. But it's interesting to look back and say, I wonder why. Were we in a hurry? 
I don't know, were we trying to challenge each other to see if we could keep up with each other? I make a little face in that third clip too that kind of looks like I made a mistake getting this too fast, but I'm the one that got it started off like this. So those are the three clips you're gonna see over the last five or six years. And then the fourth clip that you're gonna see will be me now. I'm gonna go ahead and play this tune now and I'm gonna play it on David's fiddle. It only seems fitting that we're talking about a song that he wrote that I should play it on his fiddle. So it's just really interesting that in the second clip, you hear this fiddle being played by him. So it's playing the song, you're just not, you're not, you don't hear it. Well, I don't know if you can distinguish the two. I definitely can. I know what this fiddle sounds like. Even before I owned it, now that I own and play both fiddles, of course, they have a very distinct sound to me, but I knew it then. I just knew his play, and I know what it sounds like because it's not my playing because I know what my playing is. So it's just like it blows my mind to think, what do you, you know, oh, my goodness, he's gone, and I have this footage of him playing this song on this fiddle, and I have the fiddle, and I can play the song, you know, ooh, do the crying stuff without him, of course, and I... I know that he would be so happy and that he would be so tickled and thrilled that somebody was still playing his instrument. He was really worried about that and he was very concerned and he did not want his instruments to sit or to just be stuffed under the bed or who knows what happens. He was very specific about where he wanted his instruments to go. Every time I play, especially when I play a song that he wrote, it just makes me, it makes me feel close to him and it makes me feel happy knowing he would be pleased and satisfied that his uh, fiddle is being played. So one thing I will say about that clip that you hear me and him playing together, me, Corey, and him playing together on stage, David was the king of fiddle harmony. So you're going to hear uh, just a straight melody line. That was all me. Katie cannot play great fiddle harmony. Of course, you have to have more than one, and I never have another fiddle player to play with. So that's part of it. But he was just really great. So if you listen close and really keep your ear out, you're going to be able to hear this really rich, like thick, textured sound of his uh, harmony playing. And it was all done on this fiddle. So... Without further ado, I'm going to show you the first clip, the second clip, the third one, and then we're going to cut back here and I'm going to play it in real time. So I hope you enjoy these uh, several different versions of this fiddle tune called Twin Delights. What we're going to do is actually one that David wrote for us called Twin Delights. So we really enjoy playing it. Yeah. One, two. 